All right, Shadow Warriors, this is definitely one of the more requested things I've uh, been asked to do. It's a sad story. So, lots of people still have family members, even around where I live, that uh, it's affected a lot of people, man. There was 12 people killed, and this is a very small community. They basically massacred, massacred every male that was over like 13 years old in the community. I'm going to get into exactly what happened. The real place this happened is called Limoncito. Though it's frequently confused, I think in every video I've seen with El Cajoncito, that's actually the name of the song. It's El Cajoncito, which is like the small drawer. But the actual name of where it happened is El Limoncito, the little, limit, little line, basically. There was 12 people, like I said, and this happened on the 14th of February, 2001. So Valentine's Day, a Wednesday. And an armed convoy rolled up in this small ranch community and there's just scattered houses, like let's say five, six houses over, let's say like a hundred meter area and took all the men, loaded them up into the, the back of a truck, you know, like a, a small, they have like trucks with uh Rodeo you know, like where they can move stuff on a ranch and they put them in the back of there, all 12 men. And like I said, one of them was 13, man. This is, it's just, it's, it's sad. Now, the people who were doing this, to my understanding, we're going to get into that because I think that's the most important part. What happened to these people is sad and a tragedy, but it really gets interesting when you get into who did it and what happened and so on and so forth. And that's what we're gonna get into right now. So they say it was a group called Los Culichis, which means like the people from Culiacan, something like that. And they were paid at the time for, by the Ariano Felix cartel, who was warring with the Sinaloa cartel. I've spoke about this um, from what they did, the Huero Palmas family, you know, to butcher his wife and his children and stuff, and the, the assassin they sent, and this was a dirty war, man. And the Felixes ended up losing in the end of the day, and Sinaloa ended up taking most control of most of the country, but they are still operating in Tijuana. Now, that day, who were they after? What was going on? I know that's what everyone's asking. Because these people came in there with a, 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 a commando, you know, un comando armado. But what's even crazier is they say Ramon Ariano Felix was there personally. So he was one of the leaders of the cartel, and that he was there personally on the attack. And that they were looking for Javier Torres, one of the Torres brothers. Now you can reference back to my, bro my video I've done back on Manuel Torres, my respect to the Torres family. And, uh, you know, Manuel was a, a soldier, man. He put up a fight and uh, let his people get out. Crazy dude. If you haven't seen that video, look it up. So this is Manuel's brother, Javier. And they, they were looking for him at this ranch, or at least information leading to him. That's This is my understanding. Now, it's worth noting for those of you who don't know who Javier Torres is and who Manuel was, they both worked for Miles Ampada. Javier Torres was, is, is an operator and it's a, uh, at the time this happened, this war was full, fully fledged, you know, it was going on everywhere and the women that were there in the, the Limoncito and El Cajoncito and those places, they, they were respected at least, I can say that for the most part, I don't, I don't hear of any women being killed, but children were not respected because 13 years old is still considered a child to me. So 11, if you actually go there, uh, 11 of the crosses are in one spot. 
all together. And supposedly those are the people that were in the back of that truck and they just got machine gunned. They just got mowed down. Now I say 11 in one spot and you say, well, there was 12. That's because one of them took off running and jumped out. The other was actually 13. I'm gonna get into that. This gets a little more complicated. So one took off running and he was killed a little bit way down a hill. So that's 12. 11 crosses in one spot. Went over there 12, but there was 13 because one person survived. He played dead. And it's his testimony, if you want to call it that. Uh, it sounds like judicial testimony. It's his story, you know, of what happened. Put together along with that of the widows and the family members of those murdered that day, that we can put together the facts of what happened. Now, the Comandante who was in charge of this case at that time, to my understanding, was Pedro Perez Lopez. And what happened to the people who was involved, who did this, is where it gets interesting. So, you know, like I said, the Culichis were paid off by Ramon Ariano Felix, and they comprised of people such as Ro Jose Romualdo, Quintero Cariosa. He's actually, to my to my understanding, is locked up in Puente Grande in, in, in Jalisco, which is like a maximum security prison. They have him locked up. So he's the only one that's kind of safe, you know, but I think uh, as soon as he gets out or something happens, he's uh, not gonna have too, too fun of a time. So Efraín Quintero Cariosa was shot by police along with Ramón Ariano Félix on February 10, 2002. Juan Edgardo Quintero Cariosa is apparently a fugitive, to my knowledge. Jorge Luis Cariosa Quintero, he was kidnapped and um, disappeared on June 1st, 2002. So you can see a pattern happening here with everyone who was involved in this. You see the pattern? They're all dying? Yeah. And you can see they're all related by their names. So Feliciano Quintero Cariosa <clears throat> he lived a little bit longer than some of them. He was murdered in Mex Mexicali on the 28th of May 2002 with, along with another young man. Who, I'm not going to note his name because he had nothing to do with the massacre or the events that happened that day. The last person that I know that was involved 100% in this massacre, and I think there was a lot more people. These are just people that got identified. I'm not sure why, but they did. Lino Portillo Cabanillos, we have a, a, a jail here, Carla Guaruto in Culiacan, and he died mysteriously while he was locked up in there. And from what I know, he just, he died a couple of days after he got arrested. He just died mysteriously, so. Stuff happens when you do bad things, you know, karma comes back. The song, you know, is a favorite, like at parties and people drinking and stuff. It's a sad song, but the vibe that people get from it, I think people remember their lost ones and people they've lost, you know, in this war, this conflict to a lot of people, so it's personal. Lyrics and and what it says. And like I said, I like to state that this really happened in El Limoncito. The Cajancito, what happens in the, the song, I think it did, they just put that because it sounds better or it's who knows you know why they, they composed it they put the song together and there was a reason they didn't so if you can imagine valentine's day you know just this convoy rolling into this little tiny ranch community and just rounding everybody up putting them back in the truck up truck just mowing them down one running off getting shot down the hill one surviving the gunshot wounds And all their family members left to mourn with their bloodstains and put up crosses. It's completely abandoned. This is worth noting nowadays. Uh, the last person I think left there like around 2005 or something like that. And it's completely abandoned. It's a ghost town if you want to call it that. I don't know if you'd really call it a town. It's just like five, six buildings, you know. Uh, it's just a little ranch community. It's nothing fancy. And these people pay the ultimate price at the end of the day. They supposedly, who knows, were working for people 
and they thought they had information or they thought Javier Torres was there. That's to my best understanding what happened and why that day. So I hope you guys smash on that like button. Subscribe, like, you guys know what time is with the notifications. Even though people aren't getting my notifications, who knows? So comment too, that helps out the channel and I hope you guys have a good one. I have nothing but love for each and every one of you Shadow Warriors and remember the three part lottery, prison, death, bad health, that's all you get. Nothing more, nothing less. That's a promise. Remember that this story should be a example as such. So hasta luego, tres horas. Salve.